Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss analytical procedures, which is one of the eight type of evidence procedure collection that we need to learn in our auditing course. In the prior session, we looked at the first three, which is physical examination, confirmation and inspection. And within inspection, we also looked at vouching and tracing. In this session, we'll focus specifically on analytical procedures. Analytical procedures are evaluation of financial information through analysis of plausible relationship among both financial and non-financial data. What does that mean? It means we're looking at relationship and that relationship is plausible, is predictable. What does that mean? For example, if we happen to carry more debt, we expect to have higher interest expense given everything else equal. If you have more debt, assume an interest rate stays the same or the general interest rate is trending up, we expect to see more interest expense. That's a relationship, more debt, more interest expense. If we purchase more fixed asset, we expect to have higher depreciation. Notice those relationships are financial in nature. Also, we could look at an example for a hotel. We would look at the hotel occupancy rate and we would look at the revenue. If we know that the hotel occupancy rate is 30% more than the prior year, we expect to see more revenue. Now, that, that may not be the case. Maybe the rate went down, what we charge our customers went down, but that's not really plausible. The more plausible is if we have a higher occupancy, more demand, our prices should go up. And this is just a simple example what analytical procedures is, basically looking for a relationship. Now we have many tools to perform analytical procedures. Ratio analysis is one of them. And what's ratio? X divided by Y. And we need to learn about many ratios. In this session, I don't, I don't go into every single tool. In this session, I'm just going to give you an overview of analytical procedures, but we will, rest assured, go over each account, each cycle separately, where we study in depth the analytical procedures for that cycle. Trend analysis is looking for trend over time. For example, over a five-year period, what's happening? Is gross profit going up? Is the gross profit going down? Is it fluctuating? Comparative analysis, that's a big one, comparing the balances from year to year. Reasonableness test, basically what we looked at at what we looked at here in the hotel occupancy. If we have more occupancy rate in the area, well, our hotel is located in that area. We should have a higher, we should have a higher occupancy rate. We should have more revenue. We should see more revenue as well as regression and many other tools. Analytical procedures are cost effective tool in learning about the company at the beginning of the audit, during the audit and at the end. Now bear in mind, at the beginning of the audit, as well at the end of the audit, we have to use analytical procedures. Analytical procedures are mandatory, and we're going to see how and why. During the audit, when we are conducting the audit, when we are conducting when we are conducting substantive testing, it is optional whether you want to use them or not. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. What is the main purpose of analytical procedures? Help us spot unusual fluctuation or unusual relationship. We expect to have certain relationship. As I mentioned, for example, the interest expense should be related to your total debt. Your depreciation expense should be related to your total debt. Your gross profit margin should stay the same or should trend up or should trend down depending on the economic situation. Anything that's unusual, anything that's not, that's not usual, that's unusual fluctuation or any unusual relationship, it will be spotted. Now, how do we identify something that has an unusual fluctuation or unusual relationship? Well, it arises when one of the two things happen. The fluctuation is unexpected yet present. So we saw something that is unexpected, we shouldn't have seen. For example, gross 
profit margin going up or gross profit margin going down substantially. That's unexpected, yet we saw it. Or we expected to see something, we expected to see something, but it's absent, we did not see it. We expect gross profit to go up or we expect the gross profit to go down. Now I'm using gross profit percentage as an example, but you can use any ratio or any figure for that matter. In both scenarios, when the unusual fluctuation appearing, well, we could have a potential error. There's an abnormal fluctuation that could be, could be, it does not necessarily true, it could be an accounting misstatement. Now we need to understand when these fluctuations are substantial, the auditor must understand the cause. We need to know why. Why did that happen? To make sure it's a legitimate economic event rather than a misstatement. So for example, if gross profit went down, went down substantially, maybe we 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 are accounting for certain things in cost of goods sold and they should not be in cost of goods sold and that's why gross profit went down also if gross profit went up and that was not un that was unexpected the opposite is true we did not include certain costs in in cost of goods sold that could be the case or they may not be the case maybe our gross profit went up because now we are manufacturing or we are buying the product at a lower price which reduce our cost of goods sold and we have pricing power we can we can charge our customers more that's also a plausible explanation but we need to know why all what analytical procedures did is help us pinpoint where the issue is gross profit fluctuation okay so the this aspect of analytical procedure is known as attention directing so it's telling you to look at the gross profit promotes more detailed audit procedures and areas prone to misstatement. Let me tell you this. When I was in practice, I work on several audits, but I did many, many, many reviews. You could conduct an audit, you could do a review, you could do a compilation. When you conduct a review for a company, your main evidence is analytical procedures. So over the years in practice, I became, I consider myself an expert an expert in analyzing company using analytical procedures. Actually, you become expert only after you work several years and, and looking at the same companies. This is where you really see the trend and you, you get to know the business. Now, what happens if you see a problem or you see an unusual fluctuation? You need to budget more time or you need to assign more experienced staff. Now, the good thing about analytical procedures, especially where I used to work, the software that we used, we linked the trial balance to all analytical procedures. So what we did is this. What we did is this. We start with a trial balance given to us by the client, and we prepare all the analytical procedures. As we make adjustments to the trial balance, we would also monitor on a dashboard what's happening to the analytical procedures. So if an unusual adjustment was made, the analytical procedures, the ratios will go up or down more than what we expect. It would alert us that, alert us to kind of go back and review that adjustment. Is it correct? Now, bear in mind, we should wait all the way till the end until you make all the adjustments. But what used to be neat is you would immediately see the effect of that adjustment that you made, whether you are adding more revenues, reducing revenues, booking more expenses, you would see the effect on the financial statements, analytical, per, analytical procedures, almost immediately. As I mentioned, analytical procedures are mandatory at the beginning of the audit, which is during the audit planning phase. To prepare for an audit, auditors must do what? They need to be familiarized with the client, with the client industry and its operation. And part of that familiarity is performing analytical procedures. And when you perform analytical procedures, you get to see the big picture. You would see current unaudited data compared to past audited figures or industry benchmark. Always, when you are looking at ratios or any figures, it's always good to put it into contact, into a context. So you could compare it always to the prior period, the prior year, or also compare your numbers to the industry benchmark. And such comparison help identify any unusual variation. Remember, what do we call this variation? What do we call them? unusual fluctuation. Unusual fluctuation is something that's there that we were not expecting or we were expecting but we did not see. That's what unusual fluctuation is. 
It's like either signals or red flags. It's given us more information. For example, I'll tell you how you would do it, some, how you would perform analytical procedures. And this is how we used to do it always. For example, we would flag an amount above a certain dollar amount. For example, just I um, gave you the 15,000 as an example. We would say any, any, any change more than 15,000 up or down and that change represent 10% change then we have to flag this account for further for further development again the amount could be five million and five percent ten thousand five thousand depends on the size of the company for instance if we have a constant drop in gross profit percentage that could tell us what that could tell us either we made a mistake or there's a heightened competition and the company is cannot charge more Therefore, their gross profit percentage is going down. It means let's take a look at their inventory. Maybe their inventory is becoming is becoming obsolescence. Also, if we have a surge in fixed asset balance, if fixed asset going up, they're buying more assets, it means we have to do what? Indicate a substantial acquisition war warranting thorough review. So if we saw the change in fixed asset, you know, $5 million more, well, they bought, they bought more fixed asset. Well, if we have a person on the team that is familiar with fixed asset, how to audit fixed asset, we should assign that individual there. So this is before we start the audit. This is what it, it gives us information about the company. At the end of the audit, we could use it again to look at unusual fluctuation as well. Unusual fluctuation, it means after we prepare all the adjustments, now we're looking at the ratios and one of the ratios looks a little bit unusual. What's unusual? We don't expect it to be there or we expect it to be there and it's not there. The, the figures is a little bit out of balance. That's not what we are expecting. Also, analytical procedures evaluate the probability of financial instability toward the end of the audit. How? For example, if we have an elevated ratio of long-term debt to net worth, so what we're seeing here, long-term debt is increasing relative to the net worth of the company. Also, at the same time, we're seeing a drop in the ratio of profits to total asset, ratio of the profit to total equity. This suggests those two together that the company could be heading into financial trouble. Also, the ratios at the end will help us do that. Again, at the end, it's mandatory to perform those steps. So these conditions not only impact the audit strategy, but they may also suggest doubts about the company's ongoing viability. Once again, if you know how to read ratios, are they very powerful and cost effective? And the key is to do what? In the real world, link your trial balance to the analytical procedures. So every time you make an adjustment, you see the change to the analytical procedures. At the end, there's, there are no surprises. Analytical procedures can also be used during the audit. Remember, this step is optional. You don't have to. At the beginning and at the end, you have to use analytical procedures. So analytical procedure can serve as evidence for recorded account balances. When can you use them? When, when the accounts that you are utilizing, there's a predictable relationship between them. Predictable means a stable relationship. The input is dependable. The data is reliable. What could be an example? Interest expense and depreciation expense. I can predict interest expense if you give me the loan balances of the company, if you give me their average interest expense, their average interest rate, I can predict based on my analytical procedures, I can compute the interest expense for the company. If I did so and the interest expense that I computed match that of the company, I am pretty comfortable with that interest expense balance. Same thing with depreciation expense. Again, as long as the relationship is dependable, predictable, and the data is reliable. So what we need to do now, we need to do less substantive testing. Who knows, we might eliminate substantive testing for this account. Or if we're going to do substantive testing, we may select a smaller sample size. So it will help us. But again, this step is optional. Remember, analytical procedures are mandatory at the beginning of the audit, mandatory at the end of the audit. And in between, it's optional, as I'm showing you right here. If it's help, it might be very helpful, go ahead and use it, it's cost effective. So again, in this session, we looked at one form of evidence and that's analytical procedures, one of eight. I covered analytical procedures separately. I believe it's important. We're gonna see analytical procedures in every single cycle, sales cycle, the purchasing cycle, the payroll cycle, the cash disbursement cycle, and all of them, we're gonna, we're gonna learn about specific analytical procedures. This is only the big picture. In the next sessions, we'll cover the remaining type of 
evidence collection, inquiries of the client, recalculation, reperformance, observation. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs, true, false. That's going to help you do what? Learn this concept better, this important concept, analytical procedures. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.